Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News standing in front of Abbotsford School Board Office, which is District 34. Why? Because a teacher I introduced you to last year who was canceled after teaching truths about death during the time residential schools were in operation is about to find out his fate. They're telling me that I'm a harm to children and that I need to be fired. And they can't tell me what I did wrong outside of, outside of I, I, I didn't say murder. And now I'm, because I'm defending myself, and um, they're saying, oh, I'm not, I wasn't confidential and I wasn't, I wasn't loyal, but, but this is an abusive relationship. They have all the power. They can take away my salary. They, they tell me, don't tell anybody, you know, what we're saying. Even now, Jay, you know, you can't talk anything about what happened in the meeting, because if you do, we're going to double down and it's going to get worse for you. Now, for those of you who didn't catch this initial story that gained national attention when I introduced you to Jim McMurtry, Mr. McMurtry, who had found himself marched out of class shortly after announcements spread through Canada and the world claiming that a mass unmarked gravesite had been discovered at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School. I've since done a documentary showing you that there were no remains found at that gravesite. Now, Mr. McMurtry had dared to tell the kids in class that if there were bodies there, they were most likely deaths that were caused from the leading cause of death during the times that residential schools were in operation, which is illness, tuberculosis. But that little truth bomb was too much, according to the school district. I'm going to let you know from Jim himself right now what he says happened to him after that interview because I caught up with him at the school just before he came here to this meeting. All right, Jim, today is the day where you find out your fate as an educator. How are you feeling in this moment before walking in to the trustees? I'm feeling very confident because I think there's a tipping point in our society. And even today, Road Dahl's book, including Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, are being censored. So there's, they're trying to silence all sorts of people, including dead authors. And I think uh, it's time that we said enough is enough. One of the accusations is that I am loyal to the Catholic Church. And I'm not Catholic, but I think they uh, use the word dead. I think um, the role that I'd like to see myself in is to defend the Christian teachers who are from various faiths. Um, who taught at residential schools, and um, they're not around anymore to defend themselves. But the historical record shows that they weren't murderers and rapists. They didn't put kids in incinerators or hang them, that most of them did their best. And uh, so I think the, the, the blood libel, the, 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 the smearing of all teachers in these residential schools is, um, you know, is, is, you know is, is, to me, you know, an unfair presentation of the past. And I think as a teacher, uh, the, the expectation, I would think, is certainly what I expected, you know, um, when I was a student and as a parent, is that you tell the kids the truth or, the, you know, to the ones, again, the best one's ability. So they can come to their own conclusions and make their own, you know, assessment of mm -hmm. the past. The first investigation was settled. The second investigation was that I suggested by saying that residential Indian residential school students, those who died tragically, long ago did so from disease mostly, accidents, fires. They said the residential schools were a genocide, a killing field, and um, that, um, again, the disease, that was the only comment I made. And two um, um, vice principals, male vice principals, came to my classroom and they, and they walked me out. And then when I was... Uh, down on the first floor on the layout, I decided that I wasn't going to be walked out. And I said, you have a choice. And this, the choice that I think would be a lot easier for you to make would be to, um, um, to allow me to speak to the principal first. Um, and then I'll go quietly. And I went to talk to the principal. And he told me, because I had no idea what I'd done wrong. And I said to him that, um, among other things, that I just read the Truth and Reconciliation Report the day before. And what I said was in accord with the truth and reconciliation mm -hmm. and the main allegation against me now is that I am out of step I've gone against I've offended the the, the school board's message and 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 uh, intention of of being in accord with the truth and reconciliation thing so it's an odd thing that telling the truth about issues of a sensitive nature in Canada 
is is um, is is considered to be wrong, and yet, I, I, as a teacher, as a, as somebody who is in a classroom with kids, um, I I think you know uh, not only is dereliction a duty for me not to be honest with them, but I think history should be presented as it as it was, mm -hmm. but also um, in the interest of education, teachers should be able to be wrong. But what if I were wrong? I don't think it makes any difference. I you know I would have done my best to say what happened. But I was right, and they were wrong, and they're continuing to um, to threaten me. And in a you know half an hour, I'm going to be. I've been told um, many times that I'm going to be fired, and my career is going to come to an end because once a teacher gets a sort of discipline, nobody else will hire me. And uh, but here I am, and I and I'm fine because um, truth has a funny way of. Um, um, in the end, you know, coming out. Now, Jim has entered the building with his lovely wife as well as a lawyer. We're going to wait and hear what happens. But I want to let you know that this important case that has so much effect on other teachers who are going to be watching other people in the school system about what they can and cannot say, even if it's supported and backed by history, is so important. It comes on the heels of an NDP MP trying to pass a bill or have a bill implemented that will forbid people from being able to have residential school denialism as they refer to it. Take a look at this article here from the CBC. First, let's look at the subheading here. It says a growing memorial outside of the former Kamloops Indian Residential School in BC following the May 2021 discovery of suspected unmarked graves. At least they're being a little more transparent, but I would argue if it's suspected, it's not a discovery. It says some Indigenous academics and activists say they've become the targets of a growing backlash against reports of hundreds of unmarked graves at former residential school sites, and they want Parliament to do something about it. Perhaps one of those academics is Dr. Sarah Bolio, who I myself have tried to reach out many times to understand how somebody trained in using ground penetrating radar was unable to tell the public that it's impossible to determine whether or not 215 children as young as the age of six are buried underground without doing excavation. I haven't heard back. Now they're calling it residential school denialism and describe it as an attempt to downplay twist and dismiss the facts to undermine public confidence in the Indigenous Reconciliation Project. Denying genocide is a form of hate speech, says Gazin, who represents the riding of Winnipeg Centre. So what does that mean? If there's no facts to support that there were bodies, is it going to be hate speech for a teacher or anybody just to say, hey, can we get some proof? Can we get some answers here? Which would be the first step of getting reconciliation, truth and reconciliation. All right, Jim, it's cold, but was it cold inside? What happened there? It's really hard to tell. When I went in there, it was it was intimidating. I'm a, you know, I'm really reasonably confident person. I'm I'm older. I'm I feel I'm 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 articulate and I can manage with it. And there's 15 people sitting in a horseshoe, and I was sat in the middle, and they're all staring at me. A couple were kind enough to put on a little half grin or whatever, but many were stone faced and 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 seemed adversarial, and and um, and they didn't speak. Only only one person spoke the whole time. And, and they said that you'd have a recess for five minutes and then we come back and, and ask you questions, you know, that we might have. But it ended up being not five minutes, but, you know, maybe 40 minutes. And we, I interpret that maybe as a good thing that there's some division. And without problems before, and now people are judging me like, like a criminal. They're, they're telling me that I'm a harm to children and then I need to be fired. Mm -hmm. And they can't tell me what I did wrong outside of, outside of, I, I, I didn't say murder. And now I'm, be, because I'm defending myself, and um, they're saying, oh, I'm not, I wasn't confidential and I wasn't, I wasn't loyal, but, but this is an abusive relationship. They have all the power. They can take away my salary. They, they tell me, don't tell anybody, you know, what we're saying. Even now, Jay, you know, you can't talk about what happened in the meeting because if you do, we're going to double down and it's going to get worse for you. But if no one stands up to these people, they're going to go after other people. And I just think it's, it's just so wrong. It's official. Before I could get home from Abbotsford, I received a call from Mr. McMurtry, who had just received a call from his union rep informing him that he has, in fact, been terminated. The bulk of his crimes are inappropriate comments made about residential schools. 
And the Abbotsford School District says those comments harmed many students. Yet, according to Jim, there's no definition of what that harm is. How many students were harmed? How was the harm measured? He'll probably never get an answer to that. Neither will you. This is public education in Canada. The seven school board trustees who voted this to happen to Mr. McMurtry went home to their families. Meanwhile, Jim and his wife, Lori, went home, letting it all sink in that after 40 years of educating the minds of the future, he is now forbidden from doing so. I could hear Lori weeping in the background as though there had been a death, and I suppose on some level there has been, and that is our expectation in traditional education where we actually want teachers to teach our children facts and the ability to use critical thinking. Mr. McMurtry says telling his story was never about himself. It was always about academics. It was always about doing what is right for the children. And he says that won't stop today or in his future. And since Jim is an expert in history himself, I think he should give himself a pat on the back for being on the right side of history today. Unlike the Abbotsford School trustees, now I don't know if it was a unanimous vote, so I suppose I shouldn't lump them all into one boat together. However, I have put out a media inquiry asking them that question. And perhaps if you want to ask them too, you can open up the description box below and click on the link for the written report. There you will see more information, including Jim's statement, his words after finding out this information, some of which I just recapped for you from our phone call, are linked in that written report as well. But for now, let me know what you think about this decision. Drea Humphrey with Rebel News. If you appreciate that Rebel News brings you the other side of the story, even if a member of parliament wants to call doing so hate, then consider supporting our journalism that has been bringing you the truth of what we know so far about unmarked graves in Canada. And also what we don't know, you can do so by going to CamloopsDocumentary.com. That's also where you can sign up to watch the documentary. But again, if you want to support this specific type of journalism, please make a donation there while you visit. We appreciate your support.